morning, everybody. Welcome to another live weekly version of Board Game Breakfast. I'm your host, Tom Vassell. And I am Z Garcia. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Sitting in the couch next to me today, we got some guests introducing new movies. And oh, uh, no, we're not a we're not a late night talk show. Two thumbs way down. <laughs> All righty. Well, it is a Thursday. Uh, my kids, every it's it's so funny. They come down for breakfast. They're like, what day is it? Uh, and that's mostly because different things happen on different days, <laughs> food wise. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's that's a good way essential. to keep track of it yeah yeah it's come down for me it's come down to uh you know taking out the trash that's a good reminder of what day of the week it is uh <laughs> you know when this happens helps certainly it's it's interesting you gotta adapt yeah we do so if you want you don't have to adapt though every night folks nine o'clock we do a chat live on this channel so you're welcome to join us for that yes Alrighty, well, there is a lot of stuff going on, and we're going to start off here with news. The news is, well, news is taking its own turn for what it is nowadays. It's kind of very similar in what a lot of the stuff's going on. So let's take a look, and let's get to it now. Alrighty, so first of all, in our news, force your way to the center of the universe in Talisman Star Wars. So this is from uh, is a partnership between the Op and Games Workshop. They've already made Talisman Batman, Talisman Kingdom Hearts, and they've also made Monopoly Warhammer 40,000. They make IP versions of different games. Right. Talisman, you got to get to the middle to find Emperor Palpatine, who did you know was alive? I, what? I, I just... I I know. I thought they struck him down many a decade ago. But secretly, he was alive, even though there was zero clues mentioned to this in the first two movies. No, but no, no. But if you watch The Last Jedi, there's definitely um, a lot of information in there about how um, uh, Palpatine is uh, really uh, Jar Jar Binks. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> well there is so there are sculpted pieces in this there's okay. uh you get luke skywalker kylo ren count dooku and obi-wan kenobi Ooh. and it will be available only in europe middle east and africa just like what? dark star wars dark side rising yeah it's because in america hasbro still has that stranglehold on board games with star wars Ah, I did not realize that the Star Wars Rising one was not available here. It's not, huh? It is not, unfortunately. All right. But there's a copy in the Dice Tower Library. Um, all right. Uh, Days of Wonder released a new one to three player scenario called The Captain's Return for Deep Blue. Deep Blue is an interesting game. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious at the end of the day to see where this one lands um, in regards to popularity. Because I, I was not a fan of it. I don't think you were either, Z. No, not particularly. But some people have enjoyed it. I, it's definitely not a hit hit, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're still making stuff for it. And they actually, the designer says that he had been making this before the quarantine happened. But yeah, there you go. All right. All right. Cool. Maybe I would like it better with one player, right? I feel so this is, I mean, this is available now. You can just go download this and play with what you've got, right? That's the idea. Uh, Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hansom Gluck has made some print and play expansions for two of their games. One of them, Carcassonne, the land surveyors. So you'll make a stack of surveyor tiles okay. um, and different things will happen based on what's on the top of these stacks. And then Hadara, the plague doctors. You have two doctors that will bring both good and bad to your world. Um, this is something I don't I don't care. The Carcassonne one sounded a little interesting. This one I don't really care about. I already thought Hadar was pretty good. This Plague Doctors almost feels like they're kind of winking at the, the virus a little to me. Yeah, it does. It does. I uh, was the opposite of you. I was uninterested in the Carcassonne one. It's uh, the last thing we need more content for is Carcassonne. But Hadara... What? This sounded interesting, so I did click through and check this out, and uh, it's a tiny little change. Sounds interesting enough. I wouldn't like the 
the fact that if I print this at home and sort of cut it out, it doesn't really match the look. But I wouldn't mind having this as an actual promo. It's just a few tiles, it's, you know, six or so tiles. And uh, you can choose to take one after the first round. It shuts down a whole color. So you can no longer take cards in that color, but it gives you a bunch of points. Sounds like a nice press your luck, give and take kind of thing. It sounded neat. I, I'd like to mess with it. All right, we're going to pause just for a second here. Um, the chat is saying they're hearing popping sounds in the in the chat. So it's possible that the computer that's running this, which is Roy's computer, you might have the sound of your computer going through. You may have turned it on yesterday for your, your thing. So. All right. Sorry about that, folks. We got it. All right. Level 99 announces Bullet Heart. Actually, I went and asked, and it, the, the name is just called bullet but, but they suck a little hard at the end of it because i don't know why that seems i would have i would have said bulletto i figured that Buleta. that heart might be standing in for an o you know what i mean okay bullet got it yeah okay so whatever i went and asked and it's i don't know it just is this I don't, I don't get the point of that but anyway your hero hero wins in a far flung future Earth and using your incredible powers to defend Earth from evil. It actually looks interesting. I I, I like the idea of it. Um, level ninety nine stuff. Sometimes I love it. Sometimes it's it's okay. Um, it's definitely. I'll tell you what. They're definitely a brand that sticks with their style. Yes. Yes. Like I know if I if you show me a game and say this is a level ninety nine game, I'd be like yes. So okay. this is an interesting cover. Yeah, it's sort of a bunch of. Ladies wearing very weird, distinct outfits attacking a planet? I mean, from space with a baseball bat? I'm really confused. <laughs> well, what it's else very, would you like, attack it's a like, planet? And one of them is like clearly a baseball player. One of them is, I guess, uh, somebody who it looks to be like in a Western type you know, motif with her outfit. It's, I don't know. It's very strange. But you're right. It looks like a level 99 cover. Yeah. All right, WizKids announced uh, the new version of Sidereal Confluence. Now, we've mentioned this before, but we know more information about it. First of all, the new cover. I mean, the, I mean, the first cover was amazing, this big blue cover. It was very said, good. It, 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 it had an idea, and it stuck with it. <laughs> I'm so glad they changed it. Um, I love the new artwork a lot. Right. And they're also going to add a better rule book. Thanks. Card layouts have been revamped with clear iconography. The resources are updated, so it's easier to tell the difference between the sizes. And the different ship tokens were replaced by common ship tokens because that's all you need it for the game. Okay. Like it would say, you get six ships, and so Z would take six ships of his type. But they're literally just ships. It doesn't matter. Got it. Got it. In other words, they fixed all the problems with the game. Uh, Production-wise, just to go show you how many problems were with that first production, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate if you think about it. Like... This is a very noticeable, yeah, this game, we, we really didn't do a good job at it. So we fixed it, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. A remastered edition of something that comes out only, what, three years after the other one came out, maybe? Yeah, but what's interesting is they're not saying, we made this a deluxe cool edition. They're like, we fixed it. I know. Now, yeah, now I know. don't get me wrong. Sidereal Confluence is a fantastic game. I really like it. It's a very specific game. Like, it's a, it's like at the Twilight Imperium of negotiation games. So it's it's a hard one to get to the table because you need right. a lot of people and it takes a while. But it is really good. All right, Rio Grande announces Blue Skies. Hang on, let me rephrase that. They announced Blue Skies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is from Joe Huber, uh, and this is. Uh, he had done Caravan before, so now they're doing another one. This is in the late 1970s. And so the Airline Deregulation Act happened in 1978, and you're just doing stuff with airplanes and stuff. Or you're I, I hope it's opening good. your own airline and trying to become profitable, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds neat. I like that theme. I do too. And it's really hard to tell like how complex it is because that's where I'm gonna be at. I'm hoping it's a nice Midway Euro game. I like sure. that style. Yeah. I would assume that's where it's at. 
All right, come on, announce the second Sheriff of Nottingham second edition. We may have mentioned this in the past, but there's now official um, here. This is so. Just to clarify, Sheriff of Nottingham, uh, Sheriff of Nottingham was a reprint of Robin Hood, which was a reprint of Hans der Grenz. Oh, what was the original name called? Uh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Sheriff of Nottingham came from uh, Arcane Wonders and was part of the Dice Tower Essential line. The author, the designer of Sheriff of Nottingham, sold the rights to the game to come on. So over the past few years, they've worked at a transition. That transition's happened. It is not a Dice Tower Essentials game any longer, if only because Dice Tower Essentials is specific to Arcane Wonders. That being said, it's still a fantastic game. Right. I'm not sure all the changes, um, but they, they mention that it's going to have updated rules, which I don't know what that means. Um, and they'll have some of the expansion stuff in it, like the six player, the black market, and the sheriff deputies. So okay. I'm curious if like any of the stuff we put in that expansion has made it to come on. We'll have to write him a letter. Sir. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious to see this uh, myself. Yeah, just to see kind of what the differences are, to see what they did with it. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, again, purely from a uh, curiosity standpoint. I want to see. Asmodee releases a print and play Catan expansion called We Stay at Home. <laughs> and that is pretty much the extent I know about that. All right. Looks like a couple of tiles there. And they, they explain it on there. If people want to look it up, they can they can read that a little more in detail. But they give you pretty much everything there. A couple of tiles, the preparation and the rules for that scenario. Cute. It's nice. Then, I mean, it's it's a cool idea. I liked it, but it's like Catan and Carcassonne. There's so much content. By that same token, I guess a lot of people can use this because a lot of people own the game. So, Steam Blood Rage Digital Edition. Yeah. Which is 18 bucks or 18 euros. So, um, the, if you pre-order it now, it's coming for both PC and Mac. Now, this is fascinating to me. They got seven exclusive downloadable content monsters which 100% will never be released in a future Kickstarter um, that is weird to me that they made new monsters did you think that I mean the game already has a ton of monsters but are these not oh do you think these, these are... are actual current monsters but with different Look, artwork are these names not the ones that they had alternate sculpts for like wolf woman was the alternate Wolfman, right? I mean, isn't that not... Are these not the ones that we already had? And they said, we cannot, we're never doing these miniatures again. So they re-released them with different miniatures, but the same power? I don't know. It's getting a little messy. It's getting a little And confusing. there's also a soundtrack here. This actually is interesting to me, because on a personal level, this sounds like a way I would prefer to play a game rather than, say, through Tabletopia and stuff. Um, right. right. Because it's made, done, you know, it's, it's, it's finished, and it's specific to this particular game. Right. And so they talk about, basically, they're explaining Blood Rage all over again, obviously getting people to play this um, who've never played Blood Rage before. The fifth player expansion stuff's in there for free. Um I, it's going to be launched May 27th, which is only 20 days from now. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All righty. Well, that's it for the regular news. Let's see what else we got. Hello, fellow gamers. So the 14th annual BGG Golden Geek Award winners have been announced, and there is one game at the tip of everybody's tongue, the one game that you guys nominated for so many awards. I'm just, I'm going to list them like right over here for you guys. All right. And I'm going to tell you guys a few of hashtag wingspan's humble brags. I don't know if all of you guys know this, but wingspan actually saved a kitten, like a little baby kitten from a tree. That just doesn't happen anymore, you know, in this day and age. And I don't know, wingspan crawled up there and did it, you know? Wingspan also donates to seven different charities every single year. That's, that's commitment for Wingspan right there, okay? Seven different charities out of their pockets every single year. 
Hashtag Wingspan humble brags. I mean, Wingspan is so humble that they even take the Metro to work every day. I don't think it gets much humbler than that after Wingspan has made so much money. So I just want to say congratulations to Wingspan because Wingspan. Hashtag Wingspan humble brags. Featured this week, we have Adventures in Neverland by Black Box Adventures that takes two to four Neverland residents on a fantastic story-driven adventure cooperatively or competitively for 30 minutes per player as you'll be tasked with discovering hidden locations within Neverland, unlocking side quests, and making decisions that will drive your character's narrative and skills in this storytelling game that comes with six story decks, and a plan to expand content to increase replayability for years to come in this game that just refuses to grow old and starts at $60. Speaking of characters that can't abide by those pesky laws of physics, we have Resident Evil 3 by Steamforged Games, which brings one to four Raccoon City survivors together, giving them the opportunity to evade mutant zombies and take down the Umbrella Corporation for $60 to 90 minutes as players will be getting the creeps from their tension deck that evolves throughout your scenario based gameplay, amping up your encounters and frequency as you try to survive this scenario based dungeon crawl that starts at $82. And lastly, we have Sea of Legends from Guildhall Studios who calls for one to four connoisseurs of the sea and booty looking to get pirate famous by hiring scoundrels, plundering ports, and going on adventures all while trying to avoid that pesky ex you double-crossed for about 40 minutes per player, as your story-based gameplay is driven by an app that allows players to make choices that affect what happens in the game, giving you a unique story each time you play. This pirate treasure starts at $90. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys. If you want to know more about any of the Kickstarters that you saw here today, then join me at gloryhound.com as we will talk about all of these Kickstarters in depth and if you would back them or not. It is a live show, so you guys get to participate in those comments and tell us what you guys think about these Kickstarters. Other than that, I will see all of you guys next week as we all play a lovely game of Wingspan. Hey girls and guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm going on vacation this week. I got my camera and Pa's gonna take care of you. He's a nice guy. He's got he, he's got a lot of knowledge. So I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey you! Sit down! Shut Today we're gonna go to the library of Worthington Publishing. Why? Because they got a great library. Put your hand down. Listen to me. We're gonna go here. Then maybe we're gonna go here. And if you're nice, we're gonna go here. And whoever wanted to be a Roman centurion, we're gonna go here. Well, that went well. I'm back from vacation. What do you mean you don't want me to do this anymore? They're gonna learn with me. Lincoln, a game by Martin Wallace. I'm sure you've heard of that name before. This game is a strategic two-person civil war game. You play the whole civil war in Martin Wallace's head. This is the type of game he wanted to do, right? So as it says here, two-player game, plays in about an hour and a half, and is a fast-paced, card-driven war game set in American Civil Revolution. Civil Revolution? What are you talking about? Civil War! So you fight the whole game with a minimal amount of chits. Plane tokens. Yep. One sheet of counters. About 80 counters. The counters are nice and thick. And there's only one number written on the counter. And you're going to say, but Paul, what do you mean just a number? For example, Panzer. This is a game of small unit actions and combined arms operations on the Eastern Front. This means it's German. It's a Panzer III medium. This is the data card. A tank silhouette. 4T means it moves four hexes and it's trapped. Six and nine, I don't know, and five with a white square, I completely forgot. And that's the data card I was talking about on that tank. That tank. Another tank, another data card. Different info. Now look at this. Two pieces of info. Blue, it's Union, and three, strength points. These are Confederate cards. Confederate fort, place a fort. Confederate movement, move twice. Leadership, add three to their strength points. That's it. Oh yeah, and here's the map. He who controls these two places wins the game. Okay, let's play.
that's it. That's it. Really? Yep, really. That's what I'm trying to say. Now you can play a war game. It's easy. It's Americana. It's American Civil War. You learn something. You have fun. You go home. Worthington Publishing. Large library. From the American Revolution, French Indian Wars, World War II, the American Civil Wars, Rome. Who knows what else they got? Check them out. Worthington Publishing. And we're back! It's time for a board game! And today we're going to do a riff on a game that we've played in the past. It's Z versus everybody, but you're all playing on your own. And there's only okay. six questions. It's really simple. Fast, right. simple. So today's game is called Faker! And basically, I've done this in the past. I'm going to show you some... Uh, I'm going to give you a category and give you some answers to that category. And you have to tell me if one of them is fake, they could all be real. That's always an answer. But there's always, it's always guaranteed that at least three of them will be real. There might be a fake one. And if so, I want you to point out what the fake one is. That's it. So there's how many? So I'm looking for one fake one. Well, there's six answers. Each answer you have four is going to have, you could say one, two, three, or four, or you can okay. give a fifth answer and say none of them are fake, which May never happen, but it may be five of them, too. You don't Got know. Got it. Okay, okay. All right, are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. I'll tell you which one's fake, okay, or, or maybe right. none of them. First question is, which of these dragon names is fake? These are the names of different dragons around the world. So this we all, have... This is stupid. They're all fake. No, the, the, they're all fake. It's not, it's not an answer. It, <laughs> Imugi, Nucker, Vishap, or Shagrat? Okay, uh, listen to me. These are all fake. <laughs> I don't know that, how else that... to break the news to you, but dragon names. Because dragons themselves are non-existent, their names are fake. No, no, no. The name isn't fake. The dragon might be fake, but the name is real, I assure you. So confused. All right, I got my pick. What do you got? These are all stupid oh. a little bit. I mean, Shack Rat? Okay, um, I'm going to go with uh, number one sounds like some gobbledygook you just say. So I'm going with number one as the fake one. I didn't trust myself for gobbledygook. So actually, um, so that's your answer, number one. We'll write that down. Um, I, I didn't trust myself because I didn't want to make up a name and then you guessed it. So actually... The, the fake one is actually the name of an orc from Lord of the Rings. Oh, then it's two. No, the answer is actually four. Shagrat. Um, Imugi is an ocean dragon from Korea. Nucker is the name of water dragons from Sussex, England. And Vishap, a water dragon from Armenia. This is all according to Wikipedia. Armenia. Listing, Armenia. Armenia. Listing lots of different... Uh, dragon names. All right. And then Shagrat is the name of an orc from where? Where's that orc from? Where does he live? Oh, I don't remember. So, which, <laughs> which of these board games is fake? We have Apes vs. Apes. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a war game where you're controlling apes fighting other apes. Ape yeah. Dance, a dexterity type of game from Haba. Monopoly, Planet of the Apes, no description needed. And Ape Bingo, which is literally Ape Bingo with, there's also poop tokens. Which of these board games is fake? <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm really tempted to say that none of them are fake. They all sound exhilarating, each one more exciting than the last. But. I am going to say that apes versus apes, even though I suspect it was the inspiration for Batman versus Superman, <laughs> I suspect it's also maybe fake. Uh, I, I want to say, go ahead. I watched a video yesterday where they were explaining the buildup to Batman versus Superman yeah. and 
exactly why it was such a dramatic thing. And I was like, no, no, that's not true at all. But anyway, Swing sorry. And a miss. I'm going to say apes versus apes. Yeah, that's as that right. fake as fake gets. Well, that's a bingo. Yeah. So that one is definitely an actual game. Then we got, that is, um, uh, that's Ape Dance from Haba. Yeah, Ape Dance, yeah. And then Monopoly Planet of the Apes. So Ape First Ape is correct. Yes. It is not, it is not a real game. All right. I really, like the, I really like the look of that Monopoly. That actually just came out like a couple of years ago, or even like maybe last year. They it were doing those great. retro games. Yeah, it does look good. It, it's, it's a neat concept. Retro art edition, yeah. All right. All right, which of these movies is fake? So, first one, Bride of the Gorilla. The owner of a plantation in the jungle marries a beautiful woman. Shortly afterward, he is plagued by a strange voodoo curse, which transforms him into a gorilla, or gorilla heaven. A man dies and finds out that the afterlife is run by gorillas. It's a Planet of the Apes ripoff with a sappy romance story. Three, Market the Gorilla. Nazis dressed to look like great apes are looking for gold, and Jungle Jim must stop them. Or four, the bloody ape. A gore-soaked love letter to the sex and violence of the Grindhouse movie era that pulls no punches and offers no apologies for wallowing in a skin-drenched stew of crudeness and camp. Just pick the one you haven't seen, Z. Ah, uh, there's two. I've seen the other two. There's two of them in between. Uh, Bride of the Gorilla is great. I really enjoyed that. I thought it was moving. It was traumatic, certainly traumatic. Um, <laughs> and then Gorilla Heaven, I mean, people call it a ripoff, but I actually thought it was better than Planet of the Apes. Um, but I haven't seen Mark of the Gorilla, and I haven't seen The Bloody Ape, so I'm going to go with... I think The Bloody Ape told me very little, except that it's it's very metal. It's like, this movie's so metal. Um, yeah, I'll go with that. The Bloody Ape, I think, is is not real. All right, let's take a look here. First, we have Mark of the Gorilla with Jungle right. Jim. So good. <laughs> and we have Bride of the Gorilla. It has Lon Chaney in it. <laughs> so, and then finally, The Bloody Ape. Ah, uh, this this game. Um, I mean, this movie. Sorry. Uh, there's some pretty. I actually cut out parts of the description. I could not actually read them. It does not sound is, like a movie. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I really. like how it's a hundred hundred percent pure underground trash. I love the four hundred pounds of fury hungry for female flesh. All right. Uh, so rent. The, the, the fake one. <laughs> the fake one was. What did I call it? Now, uh, Gorilla Heaven. Yes, Gorilla Heaven. That one I did make up. Gorilla Heaven is, is good. That sounds hilarious. Uh, Mark of the of the Gorilla is actually the one that, if I had to watch one of these movies, that Mark of the Gorilla sounds interesting. Nazis dressed up like gorillas, <laughs> yeah, and I Jungle know. Jim's got to <laughs> stop them? Man, that sounds like some hilarious like Sunday morning watching or some. It just sounds funny, you know? Especially uh, uh, now, it would be probably hilarious. Let's jump right. back to board games. What so do we speaking got? of gorillas, let's go to bananas. Which of these board games is fake? Bananas squared. This is a math game. Trying to figure out, um, you use the bananas to teach your kids math problems. Two, it. blue banana. This is basically a game where things are colored in the wrong colors, throwing you off. Good king banana. This is from 1933, and it's essentially pin the tail and a donkey, except it's bananas. And four, am I banana? This is a game where it basically it's one of those you are something and everyone tells you what you are or gives you clues you need to figure out what you are. That good king banana, you're saying it's kind of like a pin a tail on the donkey. What are you doing with the banana? You're like trying to pin the banana in the gorilla's mouth or something? I don't remember exactly. I think maybe you're putting it in his hand. I don't remember. He's the king. Give him a banana. Mm-hmm. Good king banana, huh? Huh? Is that no, I'm going to go with banana squared. 
Banana squared, says Z. All right, let's take a look here. Sounds way too boring. So first of all, this is the Am I a Banana game. For sure. <laughs> Only came out in Germany, I think. I love it. Then we have Good King Banana. And yes, it's a pin to... Oh, the, the banana's the king. Okay, whatever. I like. If there's green on his coat, he's not quite mellow, so put him in the fruit board till all his green is yellow. A fine fellow this in his bright yellow clothes, just right now for eating, so in your mouth he goes. Stop. Stop. All right. So we're left with uh, blue banana and um, bananas squared. Blue banana. Blue banana. Yeah. Banana. Look at, banana. The, look at, the, look at the designer of this one. Yeah, man. It's Wolfgang Warsh. I know. I have a copy of this coming from uh, Susan Common. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, this is, looks like a kid's game. It, it actually looks pretty good. This one just came out last cute. year. It looks cute. <laughs> I got it right. That's all I know. Banana squared is hot garbage. All right. All right. Which I've only gotten movies? two things so far, I'm pretty sure, right? That's correct. Which uh, of these movies is fake? All right. First, we have Pacific Banana. This is a story of Australian pilots working for a small South Pacific airline. Paul, a wildly successful womanizer, leaving conquest at every port, and Martin, sad and lonely in his search for true love. Or two, Zombies from Bananas. This is the first Malaysian zombie movie, where zombies strike a peaceful village named Banana, and how do the ordinary citizens save their lives? Three, Love and Bananas, an elephant love story. This is a team of elephant rescuers led by world-renowned Asian elephant conservationist Lek Chaler, they go on a daring 48-hour mission across Thailand to rescue a 70-year-old captive blind Asian elephant. And Assassin Bananas, which isn't technically a movie, it's a, it's a mini-series that could be a movie. After seeing his wife brutally murdered by Dr. Tomato's henchmen, billionaire banana Chick Del Monte fights crime as mass vigilante Assassin Banana, hell-bent on revenge. Oh, Tom, I um, I can't even think what your search history looks like right now in your browser. I know, it's, I know, I know. <laughs> someone, someone somewhere is sitting in an FBI office just looking at their computer going, who is this guy? Why are they <laughs> looking this up? Um, They all sound ridiculous, but some sound like they should be made and some don't. I'm going to go with Zombies from Bananas. All right. Doesn't sound like it's bringing it. That's well, my here pick. Here we go. That's your pick. Everyone else, lock in your answers. And the answer is, all of them are real. What? <laughs> Why? I don't know what else to say. Oh my goodness, look at these movies. Assassin but assass Banana. But that Assassin Banana, look at the names that it has. It has Nathan Phillips, Scarlett Johansson, Alan Tudyk. Those are like not small names. Ridiculous. Uh, all right, they're all real. Jeez. <laughs> all right, last one here. <laughs> Eating bananas makes you healthy. Which of these board games is fake? Munchkin Board of Health. This adds uh, a board to Munchkin. The Pearly Whites, a dental health game. The game board is actually a mouth and it teaches you oral hygiene trivia. Three, Hustlin' Healthcare. Even though it sounds like it, it's something different, it actually teaches you the real cost of healthcare. And Healthy Me, Healthy You, a cooperative game for kids where you stop other people from eating unhealthily. Okay. Healthy Me, Healthy You, huh? Health me, health you. We're healthy together. Um, Munchkin Board of Health I've never heard of, but if anybody's going to do some ridiculousness, maybe it's Munchkin. I don't know. I could buy all. I mean, these all kind of sound legit. Can you tell me the description of Healthy Me, Healthy You again? I had cooperative song stuck in my head. I... <laughs> It's a cooperative game for kids where basically you have to stop other players from eating unhealthily. Uh, that's a whole lot of that's a whole lot of lying. 
That's what you're saying, healthy me, healthy you? I'm saying healthy me, healthy you is fake. Fake as it gets. Everybody knows kids are going to go for that. All right, let's see. Well, there is that hustling health care where the yeah, guy looks legit. like. <laughs> is that, are you sure that's a board game and not a cutting board? <laughs> and we have the pearly whites, a dental health game. That's a horrifying cover if you think this about it. This is a terrifying cover. That kid is like, I, this is not what I signed up for today. <laughs> and then Munchkin Board of Health. So, yes, healthy me, healthy you. Yes. It's not a real game. All right. All day. Let me, uh, Roy, if you could take my screen off the camera here. And let's, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's. Oh, oh, that's somebody's, uh, that's somebody's desktop, y'all. Y'all showing your desktop. There we go. All right. Let's, uh, take a look here at, uh, and see what. Scores everyone's got. So how many did you get right there, Z? I got three. I believe I got three. That is a 50% yeah. uh, right there. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Let's take a look and see what people have gotten in the chat. Did anyone get? People are going to lie. They're about to lie to you, Tom. Anybody who got more than three is lying to you, Tom. Well, Joseph says he got six. Uh, Joe? <laughs> I believe that's not his real name. Bananas. But several people said they got four. No one, no one had the audacity to say five, and some people got zero. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm firmly right down the middle. I'm happy with that. All right, well, let's jump to some more contributors. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about Roll and Write, the Roll and Write game. But before we do that, we always like to talk about what we're doing to try to achieve better health in our lives. So uh, for me, I went on a jog this past weekend, and, and you know what? It was fantastic. I got to go outside, stretch my legs a little bit, and I also overdid it. <laughs> my body is not accustomed uh, to working out like it should be. Um, and so I overdid it, ended up injuring my knee and my ankle. Um, so uh, what I'm teaching myself and hopefully you can, uh, pick up on as well is start small. If you're like me and you haven't exercised in a while, start small, walk around the block and kind of work your way up from there rather than going out there, jogging a whole bunch and hurting yourself. <laughs> Speaking of starting small, we're going to start small with this small box of Roland Wright, the Roland Wright game. So when I hear Roland Wright as a game title, I cringe like a little bit. Like it's just like when I heard like deck building, the deck building game or whatever. It's oh, I just don't like that gimmicky kind of title and theming of this game. Ryan likes to write them off. Get it? Yeah, write them off. I write... Roll and write. Huh? Huh? It had this kind of really weak theme that it was so pasted on. It's scotch taped on. It's <laughs> it's it's bad. But you know what? We ignore the theme. We played as an abstract and actually have a really good time with it. Yeah, it was really fun. I, I really enjoyed it once we just kind of I actually never even thought about what the game was about. I just played the the um the game mechanics and I had a lot of fun. There was a lot of nice choices to make. There was um the components were good for it being a roll and write. It had that that glossy board that was easy to erase and you were erasing basically every turn. So the components worked really well to what, what the game was trying to do. And you could also kind of choose the amount of time that you played the game. I look for good decision making in games, and you know what? This surprisingly had a lot of good decisions to make. Which dice that you're going to draft, where you're going to place the different colored dots on your board, whether or not you should erase them to get your actions out of them, or you keep them on the board for points. So it's actually surprisingly a lot of decisions and a lot of fun. If you'd like to hear our full thoughts on this game, go ahead and find us on YouTube under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Well, everybody, this is Ryan. I'm Bethany, hoping you have a happy, healthy breakfast. Bye, Bye everybody. Guys. A game that has campaign elements is one in which you are going to be moving through either a story or a you know consecutive missions in a number of rounds. So a game might have things that carry over from game to game. It might have some story elements that are building on each other. 
Um, so for instance, a game like Oh My Goods has a story expansion to it that adds some story elements, adds some different missions that you're trying to accomplish as you're going through the game. Or a game like The Crew doesn't have, I wouldn't say it has a super story, but it does have a, a bunch of consecutive missions. And once you reach the end, you feel that you've accomplished that. So that's a yeah, little bit about what a campaign game is. A legacy game shares a lot with a campaign game. You're playing uh, consecutive games, the story might be building on itself, things are changing from game to game, but in a legacy game, you are destroying or you are permanently making changes to the game. So you might be putting stickers on things, you might be tearing up cards, you might be throwing away bits from the game that aren't gonna be used anymore. Um, a you know, perfect example of this, of course, is Pandemic Legacy. Um, in it, you're gonna be putting stickers on the board, you're gonna be removing cards, you're gonna be putting stickers on cards to change different powers, you're giving yourself different upgrades, you might be taking scars, all sorts of stuff like that. But the key difference is that things in a Legacy game are permanently changed from when you start Art, whereas a pink campaign game, you know, there, things are just being added or subtracted, but you can always go back and play it again. That's it. Sprinter? Uh, over there. Sprinter, sprinter. No, no. Stop. Oh, no. No, 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 Sorry. <laughs> what we want to talk about today is a great game, Flamme Rouge, which we believe, from our point of view, it's even a greater game for two players. With a two-player version, there are three great pros. The first one, more control over the game. Much more space on the board, on the um, track, and it's easier. There is no the chaotic component that sometimes can come up on a multiplayer version. Second, there is more strategy. You can count better your opponent cars. You can get a stronger sense of his strategy and play accordingly, slip, slip stream over his players, help each other with your teammates and your ruler support your sprinter much, much more uh, easily. And that brings me to the third point. If you're using the Grand Tour rules, and if you're not, whoa, check them out, Work and Geek, the game designer posted them there, and soon they will be on expansion, rumor has it. If you're using those rules, the, the two-player version is even, even uh, more intense. Uh, I just love it. It's, for instance, the exhaustion card rule on the Grand Tour uh, scenario. Uh, you keep half of your exhaustion cards uh, at the end of a race for the following race on a two-player game in which there is such a head-to-head, -head, such a close game. Of course, unless one player really sucks and another one is great, but normally it's a head-to-head -head game. Starting a new race with exhaustion cards in your deck makes a huge difference and makes it much, much more fun. So check it out with two players. Grab whoever you want and play this game. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome back to 20 Questions. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, this is 20 Letters. Tom, I have four games here, and I'm going to try to get you to guess as many of them as possible. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get all four. You're going to have the okay. audience's help with this, of course. They'll be able to give you ideas in the comments and so forth. But the only thing I ask of everybody is that you don't Google stuff. You will ruin the game if you adjust for the sake of being, uh, you know, sharp and, and helping Tom, if you Google stuff, it you know, some of the stuff is very much findable. So here's what I have uh, the games lined up. First game, second, third, and fourth games. Uh, you have letters I gave you already, 20 letters, skipping some of the less popular ones. So you're going to pick a letter. I'm going to tell you what the category is. I'll tell you what the answer is for that category for the first game. And then you get a guess. You're going to get one guess after every letter. Now, if you want, after I tell you what the category is, Tom, you can bump that letter back. And I'm going to let you do that five times. I'm going to let you pass on a letter, knowing what it is now, come back to it later for a later game. I'm thinking, 
I'm going to put the odds at 50-50. I'm thinking you're going to get two of these. If you get three, you'll be impressed. If you get all four, you're really doing quite well. So um, let's okay, go ahead I, and dive into I, it. I have some questions. Yeah. I, I don't. There's only four games. I only have four games. So that a lot I, I of stuff. I don't understand the letters again. Well, you're only working on the first game right now. Just one game. If you get it, I'll move on to another game. But you can never ah. reuse a letter. So when I use a... Well, I, I, I'm i just going to say a letter and then maybe that say will Say a letter, understand. yeah. Go ahead. All right. H. Okay, the letter H is for... It's called the hefty shake test. I'm going to grab the game. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to let you listen to that. I'm going to tell you about how heavy it is. <laughs> All right, all right. So you may now say, okay, do it. And I'm going to go ahead and reach down and do that. If you don't want me to do it, if you're like, no, push H for one of the later ones, then I would just bank H for you, and you can come back to it later. So I essentially have five clues per game if I'm playing perfectly. Yeah, some of them you might get in two clues. Some might take you eight. These are definitely not equally useful across the board, right? Ah, uh, let's just do it. I'll, I'll do this clue. Here we go. So you want to go ahead and cross out H for yourself there? Got it. We are going to... All right. It's not too heavy. Not too heavy, this game. Uh, I'm going to take it over here. There we go. It's kind of... It sounds right. a little loose in there. Could you shake Quite it some few. more? I like hearing you ruin your own games. Um, there you go. That's what that sounds like. Give me a letter. Okay, well, that eliminates card games, I think, at least. All right. Let's go with A. No, you can you can give me a guess if you, if you wanted to. And again, you can always... <laughs> you've got the audience. They can say anything they want to. But how many guesses do I get? You get one after each letter. Oh, okay. I'll guess a game then. Uh, Jamaica. That is not it. But that'd be hilarious if it was right. I would that just would retire. Great. I would just go leave the room. All right. What's next? Pick a letter. A. A, A, A. A is for ages suggested on the box cover. Would you like it? Sure. Although yesterday I taught my kids a game that was, it said 14 plus in the box. And they're like, we can't play this. And I said, no, I'm pretty sure you can play it. We went through the rules, and they're like, why does it say 14 plus? It's like, because they, cause they lied. Well, this game is 14 plus as well, Tom. 14 plus. Now, that could be because the game actually requires the players to be at least 14, or they could just be doing that to avoid those tests, those pesky tests. Hey, you didn't ask me if I want to pass the question, but I didn't. I did um, ask you. I did ask you. You got to tell me if you want to pass it. So um, yeah, that's right. Now. Okay, so it's it's not a card game for 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 players fourteen plus. That doesn't narrow it down. Uh, I'll go with Blood Rage. It's not it. It's not Blood Rage. It's not probably less heavy. All right. Oh, uh, let's jump to the other end of the alphabet and to W you is for what wins i'm gonna tell you what in the game wins you the game would you like to know hear that now or would you like to save that no i would like that one that would help a lot ceiling portals closing or ceiling portals that's what wins and it's actually several games all right, I know that was too light of a box for you to have shuffled Arkham Horror third edition. All right. Um, no, I'm not. That's not my guess. I'm I'm talking out loud here. No, no I know. I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm saying sure. You can think that like a foolish man and assume I'm not strong enough to fling Arkham Horror third edition, fourth edition, any edition you want around the room like it was made from paper mache. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna go to the lighter end. As some of the people here are saying, we'll do Elder Sign. It is not Elders, Elder Sign. Ooh. All righty. 
Again, people can say whatever they want in the comments. Just don't Google stuff, people. Tom isn't taking the letters. He's mentioning it. The letters I... These letters what? have nothing to do with the name of the game. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> not whatsoever. <laughs> okay, that'd be super weird. All right, let's go to J. J is for jerkiness. <laughs> jerkiness, I would tell you how jerky the game is to the how, like how mean the players are to each other. You can now, pass it. I want to pass this one. This is not helpful right now. All right, All right so Jay is uh, getting bumped. Okay. And you said I can only bump one letter? You can bump five letters over the whole game. Got it. Five over the whole game. No worries. All right, let's do E. E is for expected expense. How much this is, I just went to Amazon and looked at how much you can get it for right now, if you can get it. I will right, we'll do it. Go ahead. You can get this game right now for $36.14. That's pretty cheap there, folks. And that does eliminate ghost stories. So don't be saying ghost stories. Because um, ghost stories is out of print and would be pretty pricey, I think. Remember, we can't look it up. Don't cheat. <laughs> All right, what do you think? Um, so it's 34 bucks. It's not super light. You close portals. That's like the most powerful clue you've given to us. There That's can right. only be so many games. That Mayfair game that you'd like is out of print, I'm sure. So that couldn't be it. Um, not to mention Mayfair is out of business. Which of Salem getting... is what you're thinking of? That's very out yeah. of print. But I, was, <laughs> um... uh, that's, a good, that's a good guess. We'll guess Pandemic Cthulhu. Pandemic, Reign of Cthulhu. Very well done. Get out well, of here, game. Well, I got that because of that, that W. That W was a powerful clue. <laughs> it is. And some clues, like I said, are very strong. Others are not. All right. You are on to the second game now. You cannot use any of the letters you've already said. I'm good. You're done? You feel good? <laughs> we got one. You, you, I'm, got, I'm, I'm expecting you to get four of these. Hey, Dad, I tried. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> my report card. This is an F plus right. so far. Let's do O O O. It's magic. The O stands for original release date. Would you like Ooh. to know what the original release date was? I would. Let's do that. This game came out in two thousand and one. Ooh. And again, that. don't forget, we are now on to the second game. You can ignore everything else except the letters you already burned through. You know what I enjoy about this is every time I ask you a letter. I've wasted three parts of your life finding out the other three clues. I don't know what that means. Like, you wrote three other dates for the other games, and you'll never, ever say them Oh, out. yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I did a lot more than that. <laughs> the dates was easy. <laughs> All right, let's go to B. Okay, B is, is for the box size, which I will describe to you. <laughs> Um, no, I don't want to do that one. Let's skip that one. All right. You want to bank that? Okay. I do. I do. Fine. All right, let's You've do already banked T. JB. Uh-huh. T Which for one? Thomas. T, T for, for Tom. Thomas. Well, funny enough, T is for Tom's rating if rated. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Would you like to know what you rated this game? Go for it. The ever useful 7.5. <laughs> However, the problem with 2001 is I haven't done my 10 year retrospective. I always go back and check my games. So 7.5 could be different now. 7.5 is means I liked it, but not enough to give it that seal of excellence, which is what I was given back in 2001. Uh All right, let's do F, since that's what we have. F is for flashback, in which I'm going to play the title of the game in my own voice backwards. <laughs> All right, how many times are we allowed to listen to it? You can listen to it as many times as you want, as long as you don't record it and reverse it. I think it's hilarious that you did this for all four games. I did. Um, 
You want oh, it now or you want to save it? No, nah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. That was it. I'll play it again. Are you hearing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it goes again. There you go. All right. So what can you what can you gather from that? I gather that you listen to this game is broken. Um, sure. This was actually the absolute last category I came up with. <laughs> so what can you gather from that? It's a, it's a short title. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's from 2001. I will say people here are saying Devon. Somebody might be cheating. It is Devon. Well, how could that be cheating? Somebody recorded and played it backwards. <laughs> you got the second game. Yeah. Third game. <coughs> go. Pick a letter. Oh. Actually, we're going to go to B, box size. Okay, you're bringing back B for box size. I will describe it to you. It's a fairly small box. Um, it's about as wide across as I can uh, make my palm, maybe, from uh, the tip of my thumb to the tip of my uh, pinky. And it's a square box. It's about that thick or so here. It's, uh, you know, a few inches thick. Uh, that's actually pretty helpful. By the way, I would change Devon to an 8, maybe even an 8.5 at this point. It's really ah. gone up for me since I played it. Well, if nothing else, I want this game to inspire you to re, uh, you know, re-rate some games. That's really what all of this research was about. K. K <coughs> is for Kickstarter amount, if any. Well, let me see. What was the... The first game was, um, that was Devon. What was the first game now? I can't remember. Uh, first game was Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. So I'm going to make an educated guess that you would not have put this in there if there hadn't been some Kickstarter game. So I have a, probably a 66 to 100% that this is a Kickstarter one. So I'll take that. None. All right. Well, hey. It's information, right? <laughs> all right. All right. Um, P. All right. P is for publisher. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. The publisher. You want it? Okay. The oh, wait, 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 wait. Before you say that, I'm sorry. I was going to guess after. I didn't guess after the last coup. So I'm just going to make a wild guess. Beastie Bar. Beastie Bar is not it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the publisher is Haba. Karuba. That is not it. Okay, okay. All right, Tom, pick a letter. What do you got? You got some letters left. You got some good stuff left. Uh, w. W, you already picked, buddy. Ah, I was trying to see if that would work. All right. Um, <clears throat> Are you trying to cheat? I am. S. Guess what? I just I added a fifth game then. No, I, no <laughs> way. It's too much work. Okay, what did you say? S. S is for start player rule. Oh, you hate start player rules. But it might be very descriptive. All right, I'll take it. You want it? I do. Very well. It is. The player who has eaten honey most recently starts the game. I thought you'd put this one in there. Um, except I don't know the name of the game. Too bad. <laughs> uh, the audience will help you, I'm sure. It's that stupid 
Uh, what did you call it? I call it stupid. Well, um, that's not its name. Moving on, pick a letter. Oh, uh, it's that uh, the bear carrying honeypot game. I don't remember the name of that game. Well, the audience uh, should have caught up by now. What did they say? Um, no, it's not Hive. Why? It, the game was made by Haba people. It's that stacking game. Yeah, there's a bear and he carries honey pots and you move them around. And it had a name in English and it had a name in German. I called it by the German name, but then it came out strong stuff. That's the English name. Yeah. Oh, strong stuff. Yes. Very the well done. Box, the square box really helped there because <clears throat> the square box slash Haba, because that narrows you down. Oh, absolutely. But now those categories it was are gone. Hop game. Now, like, Publisher would be really useful for, you know, all of them, right? But you can only use it once across four games. Very well, Tom, you're down to the last game. I got nine. We'll be okay here. All right. We're just going to go in alphabetical order. C. C is categories on BGG. I give you the main category on BGG. Go for it. Miniatures. All right. I'll guess... Blood Rage. That is not it. Okay. D. D is for designer. Eric M. Lang. <laughs> Rising Sun. Oh! oh wait. Oh! Yeah, baby. Tom Vassal is a beast. Oh, well, Tom. I'm, how see, many letters did you have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Seven is your current score. And if we ever do this again, then <laughs> you need to end up with a with more letters left over than seven. You know what, though? I, I was really banking on it being a Kickstarter game there. It is. Because I, I didn't think you would have the gumption to put that question in and then four non-Kickstarter games. <laughs> Maybe. I might, I might in the future. <laughs> are the other letters secret, or do you want to tell me what they are? Or do you want to save uh, it for a future game? Uh, what do you think? You want to save it? I think you should save them just because that way, otherwise I might try to remember what the letters do. Sure, sure, sure. And I might, I might even pick alternate letters, like alternate things for the letters. But as of right now, you know most of them except for seven. I'm, uh, I'm hanging on to the other ones for now. All right, folks. Huzzah! Let's go. Let's go on to some more contributors. I'm Starla. I'm Mick. And we are our Family, family Plays, Plays Games. Games. Katam. 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 Now, I know there's a love-hate relationship in the hobby with this game. But I'm going to tell you, we love it because this is the one that brought us in. Well, you know, we mentioned Settlers of Catan mm -hmm. in our first episode on Board Game Breakfast. And we also talked about Catan on our own uh, YouTube channel, and it's number 20 of our top 20 family games. And Catan is something that, you know, my husband and I, we had a little debate on whether it should even be on our list, but I told him that it had to, yeah. because this is a game that really brought us into the hobby. It did. It did. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, we still love to play it. Um, I still think it's a great gateway game for anyone who hasn't tried the modern board games. It's still fun. And even though we've got people who don't really like it as much because it's older and all that, we still love it. We do. And we love some yeah. of the different, uh, you know, different uh, vari variations that they are. Yeah. You know, like uh, with, with Settlers of the Stone Age, we have that. That's pretty cool. And then we like the two-player version of Rivals of Catan. Love that. We do. Yeah. So, I mean, there's always a place for this game in our hobby. And because we focus on the family aspect, we love to play with our son. Uh, we, we also like that it taught him how to trade because all of the games but we play he, prior... But he don't, he don't give us no sheep and stuff. No, he, he, he don't still trade he right. Don't, he don't trade right. It teaches him how he to trade. trade right. He just no. doesn't trade. He don't trade right. Unless you give him all your stuff. So yeah. that's a whole other story. Uh, a whole other story. So check us out next time where we'll share with you another one of our mm. favorite family games. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody.
everybody, welcome to All Aboard Gamer and our brand new segment called Perfect Pairings, where I'm going to take you through a recipe that I really enjoy making and Brandon is going to share with you a game that we really, really enjoy. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to make coconut curry lentil stew. First steps first, we have some brown rice going on the stove and I'm going to chop up a small onion and then I'm going to chop up these five large tomatoes. And we're gonna add two tablespoons of coconut oil, about six cloves, minced, and we're also gonna put in this chopped onion. And we're gonna add in two cups of lentils. We think it pairs well with chai. All right, so we just finished up a delicious dinner of coconut curry lentil stew. And uh, the whole point of this fun segment, at least we hope it's fun for you, is looking at food, which is always fun, right. but then looking at a board game that we believe pairs well with us. Maybe it'll pair well with you. Mm -hmm. So the game is? Chai. And uh, maybe coconut curry lentil stew isn't your cup of tea, but chai is definitely our cup of tea when it comes to board games. Uh, it was recently fulfilled on Kickstarter, right? That's yes, the version was. that we have. It's um, published by Steep Games, and the components are gorgeous. We love it. Um, you're fulfilling orders, you're getting ingredients uh, to make the tea and the orders, and it's just very, very clever. <laughs> that's right. So that's our perfect pairing game for this week. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll talk to you later. What's up, everyone? My name is Melissa McCack, and this is Smashing Buttons and Slamming Cards. This is a segment where I talk about a video game I love, and I connect it to a board game I love. And this week, I want to talk about South Park, The Stick of Truth. That is a wacky sort of video game. It is based on the South Park franchise, and it's pretty much a parody on Dungeons and Dragons. It's silly, it's fun. You're going through it as though you're going through some sort of Dungeons and Dragons uh, session or whatnot. I would like to connect that to Five Minute Dungeon. This is another sort of wacky, silly board game, I guess. And again, it's kind of like a parody on Dungeons and Dragons where both of these games, the video game and this board game, doesn't quite take itself seriously. And I like that. With this one, you're just going through dungeons as quickly as you can, playing the cards that you need. And it's a cooperative game. So you're all working together to uh, beat the dungeon, beat the boss. So it's a lot of fun and I like it a lot. Anyway, that's it for this week. If you'd like, you could check out mine and my brother's channel called Room 51. We're now on YouTube as well, doing our top 51 games of all time. Anyway, I will catch you next time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is another show. We will be back later today uh, with our top 10 relaxing games. Special uh. guest Mike Delicio will join us. So that's at 2 p.m. That's three hours from now. So come on in, join us, you have a chance to talk, and we'll see you then. Until then, and with a special thanks to our contributors, I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Thank you, everybody. And you've been watching Board Game Breakfast. <laughs>